Okay, I couldn't hear you for a second, Maria. Okay. Okay. All right, I'm going to get started on live streaming in just a second. The challenges of technology, I oh, tell you. Absolutely. Thank, thank, thank folks for the patience. This yes, is I uh, never had this happen to me. <laughs> right. Okay. Would I say our new reality? All right, and I'm uh, bringing Tawana in. All right, awesome. All right. Great. And it doesn't look like there's no audio for her, though. Well, I, I just upgrade her. She's going to have to connect her audio now okay. that she is a panelist. Um, try reconnecting. OK, I just let her know. Um, so we're going to go ahead and get started because we kind of have a full agenda um, and we do have um, the folks that we contracted with for the annual report are coming at 730 to kind of go over the new um, go over the report that they've done thus far. Um, we may need to mute folks. I'm hearing some feedback and I don't know if it's just on my end. OK, yep. All right. Perfect. So it is 6.08 and we're officially calling the uh, Council for Minnesotans of African Heritage uh, meeting to order. Um, if I can have someone uh, get a motion to adopt the meeting agenda. So hopefully everybody has had a chance to look at look it over. And if there's no um, updates or um, changes, I just need a motion to adopt the meeting agenda. Carl Crawford. Thank so you. Is there a second? So second, no. Okay, thank you. Um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. I'm gonna say people are gonna have to unmute themselves. Um, and then you oppose? <laughs> any, any abstentions? Motion carries. Um, for the consent agenda items, there were a couple of things that um, that we need to look at or that you should have looked at as you got your packet. Um, there were approval of minutes that were from October and from November. Um, there were also staff reports that do not necessarily have any action items. And we thought for the sake of the meeting time, we would put that under our consent agenda items because there wasn't um, a lot in there where that would cause for discussion. There will be some updates once we get down to some of our standing items and, um, and a couple of other areas. So, okay, Tawana says she's gonna go out and come back in. Um, so if everybody has had a chance to review that and first before we approve the consent agenda, were there any, um, any corrections or additions to the um, meeting minutes for October and or November. Hearing none, I'm gonna assume none. And so if I can have a motion to approve the consent agenda items. So, so thank you, Carl. Is there a second? I'll second. This is Quentin Bonds. Thank you, Quentin. Um, any discussion? Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? <laughs> Motion carries. Um, Tawana, for your for your <laughs> records, um, Carl Crawford um, called for the motion. Um, Wayne Doe seconded the motion for the consent agenda item. And okay, can y'all can y'all hear me? Yep, we can hear you. Okay, I, I'm gonna listen. Have to listen to the recording, anyways, because I think I okay. missed a, a few times. But this, it's okay. Go ahead. Okay, 
Okay, so moving on, um, I do not see um, Treasurer Daniels. So um, if Linda, if you can go over the financial report. Madam Chair, wasn't Treasurer Daniels asking for some maternity leave? Did she do that? I didn't know it was, I don't think it's this meeting to my knowledge. No, oh. it's for the summer and she's actually trying to get in right now. Okay. So, oh, okay. Yeah. Right. So I don't so, know if you want me to still go yep. over the report. If you okay. could. Okay, okay, sure. So you should have received your report in, in the email. And uh, basically the report has not changed. Um, however, there was a, um, a negative in the column of uh, professional technical services outside vendor. And so we moved some money from the operating cost, where it, which is kind of a, a holding bucket um, to cover that deficit. So that was the only change from um, last month to this month. And, and and just kind of reiteration, um, you know, we always look at the unobligated and and keep it in mind that we're towards the end of our biennium. Um, the expectation is that we will exhaust those dollars um, because there's nothing to be carried over because we will actually start a brand new uh, biennium um, fiscal 22. Correct. And those numbers that I, that column is is from the unobligated. Um, Column, those dollars were, were in the unobligated column that I was referencing, just for clarification. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Any questions to the financials? Um, you know, and again, I know we keep saying it, but you know, the way that the agency is set up, majority of the dollars you are going to see from a salary perspective, because we're not necessarily program driven, so to speak. And so that's um, why you see um, a heavy weight on the salaries versus some of the other areas as you're looking at the various cost centers. Oh, I, I got a little concern, a uh, uh, question, I guess. I know at one point we talked about the fact that now that we are full, um, we, we are full staff with the council members, there were going to be some moving around regarding per diem. Did that happen? Um, Sorry, that, can you all? That, yeah, so Sorry. that conversation Sorry. probably was prior to me coming on board, uh, uh, but we will shift yes. any dollars into that column to make sure that we can cover all of the per diem expenses. So as of right now, uh, we don't have to do that or it, it was either done prior to me coming on board, but I will uh, check into that to see if dollars were moved. Um, in September or early October, and I will get back to you on that. Thank you, Linda. Yeah, that, that was yeah. before, prior to you coming on board, definitely. Yeah, yes. I think it was, yeah. yeah. So we, we will make sure that the per diems are covered. That's important. Thank you, though. And then I do know that um, Council Member Daniels is on. So um, Council Member Daniels, just FYI, we just did, you know, cover the financials. But I don't know if there was anything that you wanted to add. Um, Linda did express how we kind of moved monies around so that we made sure that we're not having showing any negative um, items on, you know, the MFR. So the manager's financial report. And then the other thing that we just talked about is letting folks know that this is the end of the biennium. So the, the dollars will be exhausted. Um, along with there will be some monies that we'll have to shift yet again to make sure that now that we are fully um, seated for the council to cover the per diems. So I didn't know if there was any other items that you wanted to express or not necessarily. Um, I think that covers kind of what we went over through in our executive meeting. So yeah, that is, and I apologize for being late. I'm out of state and I was having trouble connecting with this. No, area. not a problem. We we kind of have had some technological um, issues, so so you're good. <laughs> We're not too far on the agenda, so you're absolutely good. Okay. Um, so I, if if there aren't any other questions in reference to the finance uh, report that was given, I'm going to move on with the agenda. Are there any other um, 
questions or concerns that was presented? All right, I'm gonna move on. So we do have a special guest. Um, so as you recall, just kind of a reiteration for people that may not realize, you know, that we've made this change as of January of early part of this year. Uh, we wanted to engage um, various agencies and invite commissioners and or other constituents that can bring light to um, share with us about their agency, but then more importantly, be able to give information for our community members um, of resources that may be available for them as they're looking at doing various aspects around African heritage communities. So I want to introduce to you all Commissioner Robert Doty, who is a commissioner, newly appointed commissioner um, of, of Department of Revenue. So thank you, Robert, for, um, for coming and speaking to us today. So I'm gonna turn it over to you. Um, and we can't hear you. <laughs> No, nope, we can see your mouth moving, but can't hear you. Amber, I wonder if he's gonna have to do what others have had to do. Oh, no, try it, try it now. Try unmuting yourself. Oh, we still can't. Um, just she's using the headphones to unplug that if she's not to try headphones. No, that's just the it, no headphones. That's just the icon. Okay. So I wonder, Robert, I wonder if you need to um, log out and log back in. OK. So while he's doing that, do we have any community members that I guess we can skip down to um the community public comments and so i don't know if there are any community members that that have any questions or concerns i see we have one community member no one signed up uh chair Hughes. okay okay so while we're waiting on um commissioner Doty to come back i'm going to just keep going with the agenda once we see him back on then we'll um go back to him so the um, the next two items are um, under unfinished business and they're probably really quick items. So one of the items that we've been talking about is the commissioner's schedule for 2021. Um, the executive team met last uh, last week. And one of the things that we had agreed towards is we said we wanted to continue to do the commissioner um, you know, schedule and have commissioners come to our meetings. And so what we were looking at doing is we said we would decide, you know, January, February, March, kind of do it in a three month block or a two month block, um, you know, case scenario. Um, two of the individual commissioners that we really said would be great to get them, you know, on board is having um, MMB be able to come. And so that's one of the things that we're looking at doing. Um, and then we will continue on this journey, like I said, for 2021. Um, do, uh, any questions? I see Commissioner Doty is back, but any questions before I turn it back over to him? All right, Commissioner, let's try and see if we can get you with audio this time.
Looks like we still don't have audio from him. I think I, I think I heard something yeah. if he can speak up. Uh, can you hear me? Yep. Yay. You can? Yay. <laughs> and then we got the slides back up. There we go. <laughs> All right. I'm so very sorry. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> so, um, what? So, thank you. All. Thank you. Now you got me all rattled and everything now. So, yeah. <laughs> now, so first of all, I would like to thank the council uh, for having me here this evening. Um, special thanks uh, to Council Chair um, Narita Hughes, as well as uh, Executive Director Linda Sloan for the invitation. I really appreciate it. So um, um, uh, my colleague, uh, Michelle Dancer, will be uh, doing the slides so that you can see what I'm talking about. Um, I hope to be able to leave uh, some time at the end for a few questions if anyone has them. So um, with that, I'm going to get started. So again, my name is Robert Doty. And I am uh, Commissioner of the Minnesota Department of Revenue. Um, I, as, uh, as Board Chair uh, Narita Hughes mentioned, I was recently appointed to my position by Governor Tim Walls and Lieutenant Governor Peggy Flanagan. My official first day as Commissioner was actually November 12th. So actually, I've been on the job just shy of four weeks. So I'm just figuring it out still. <laughs> but prior to my appointment, um, to Commissioner, I served as Assistant Commissioner with the Department of Revenue. So this evening, what I'd like to do is I'm going to be providing a brief overview of, of the Department, um, um, followed by an outline of the Department's work in outreach and engagement. And like I said, I hope to be able to, to leave um, some time at the end to uh, uh, for answer any questions that anyone may have. Uh, next slide, please. So um, uh, the mission of the Department of Revenue is to is uh, working together to fund Minnesota's future. And for us, together is really the most important word in our mission. We know we cannot do our work without you, our business and community partners. We value your perspectives as we find ways to better serve Minnesota taxpayers. We are grateful for opportunities like this evening where I get to connect with members of, of the community hear your concerns, and answer any questions you may have. Next slide, please. So when the individual income tax filing season is what most Minnesotans think of when they think of the Department of Revenue. But individual income taxes are just one of over 30 different tax types that the department is responsible for administering. We work year round with our customers to help them understand and meet their obligations under the tax laws. We work, we work to make their in interactions with the department as efficient as possible. And as you can see there on the slide, in addition to individual income tax, I mean, you know, again, there's property tax, sales tax, and we have a number of very, what we call special taxes that um, a lot of people may not even have heard of, um, mineral taxes, um, tobacco, petroleum, whatever. So, so we, we do, in, like I said, we do administer th over 30 different tax types. So next slide. So who are our customers? We serve a broad base of customers at the Department of Revenue. This, this includes individuals, business, tax professionals, local governments, and legislators. We, we do this work with about 1,400 employees that are located all across the state of Minnesota. Next slide. So um, now I'd like to just shift real quickly to uh, what, what I'm calling the work that we're doing with outreach and engagement. And I'd like to do this by, um, by really looking and focusing on, on this continuum that we use, um, which on the left, on the left side of the continuum is what we call community outreach. And then on the, all the way to the right would be community engagement. So first starting at the left, community outreach. Uh, community outreach implies that whoever is being reached out to are really outsiders to that organization. Outreach is done for the purpose of providing education and information with the intent of extending the organization's reach. 
So in our, how we look at this as community outreach is really one-way communication between the Department of Revenue and our customers. So in this case, you know, we may be providing you with um, um, educational information or, um, or whatever, but it's really the one-way dialogue. We're telling you what it is, and that's it. So that's really, that's really the, communicate, the community outreach section. Then as we move more toward the center in marketing, um, when an organization communicates to a customer audience with the intent of inducing a behavior change on a short-term or permanent basis, nonprofits and governments often use marketing to deliver an ethos or social purpose message about the services their organization could offer to an applicable audience. So that's when we look at marketing. And then finally, as we get to all the way over to the right, which is really community engagement, um, that's really a process where an organization acting for community benefit works to build lasting relationships in order to apply a collective vision that benefits the community. Community engagement is a, is a much more active method of implementing change than the static method of standard marketing or traditional outreach techniques. So for us, you know, as we said, community outreach is more one-way dialogue. Now as we, on the right-hand side, community engagement is truly a two-way dialogue. So, so we may be giving um, customers um, education or information, but in addition to that, we're also then um, um, creating a dialogue where we're listening to them about the impact of, of what we're saying, quite frankly, and the impact about our policies and procedures. And really, most importantly, we're taking action on what they're telling us. I mean, that's really the, the, the key. Next slide, please. So um, with regard to outreach, we have really one major goal, and that's to ensure that revenue-specific information and education is delivered to, a, to various customers and co customer communities using a variety of methods. And as you can see there, that could be trade shows, conferences, seminars, webinars, I mean, all of that. Again, that is, this is all about one-way one -way dialogue. We're just giving you information. Next slide, please. So with now, you know, counter that with regard to our engagement goals. And, and really, you see there's four of them there. So first of all, advance the mission of the department through ensuring equity in our policies and practices for all taxpayers, including those impacted by social, economic, political, and access barriers resulting in systemic disadvantage. Secondly, better understanding how systemic barriers affect taxpayers within disadvantaged communities and the resulting impact on the level of tax that they report they pay, and that they receive. Thirdly, engaging all taxpayers with current and future tax policy from the department, including those impacted by barriers resulting in systemic disadvantage. And then finally, highlighting internally the impact of tax policy choices that further systemic inequities for disadvantaged communities across Minnesota. Next slide, please. So our, the strategies that we employ to really address those, get at those goals, really there's five of them. So the first one is really to partner with external organizations. And, and that really allows us to work directly with individuals um, from these various organizations so that we can really directly get to the communities that we want to try to serve. So quite frankly, I mean, I look at um, um, uh, working, hopefully being able to build um, a nice partnership uh, with the council, for instance, really helping us to be able to really get to uh, communities um, across the state um, of, of African descent, quite frankly, and being able to um, better understand the impact of our policies and procedures on, on those communities. So that's, that's one. Secondly is to partner with local chambers of commerce across the state. And this allows us to obtain relevant information to be used by the department for, again, for our policy and practice choices. Thirdly, uh, partner with, with other state agencies. And this is really about data sharing. Um, 
and, 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 and really for the purpose of affecting uh, our department's policies and, and practices. Um, fourthly would be to establish relationships with the 11 tribal nations. And again, just like other communities, um, we're trying to understand um, uh, the barriers that, um, that impact tribal nations. And quite frankly, I mean, some of the barriers that impact tribal nations are, are unique. And so better, wanting to better understand that is a big part of this. And then finally, building on our current outreach efforts. Um, as we talked about, we're already out there um, providing information, education to various communities, groups, or whatever. And so again, how do you build on that so that you can move along that continuum from outreach to actually starting to engage with those communities? Next slide, please. So I'm actually proud of this. This is one of the things that I worked on the first six months I was an assistant commissioner. <laughs> and basically, this is um, our engagement model. And, um, and so first, uh, I think the thing is to note is that this model is really intended to include activities that are both considered outreach as well as engagement. So this model is really based on kind of three concentric circles. Um, with, rev with revenue outreach activities kind of um, in the center there. So, um, so the, the, the work of, of the outreach um, activities that's being done in the, in the center there is uh, mainly within our divisions and coordinated through what we, we have an outreach committee. And, um, and they work really hard to coordinate um, a lot of these educational activities that I've been, been speaking of. Uh, uh, these outreach activities, like I said, include educational seminars, webinars, association conferences, and industry trade shows. And, um, and again, these, these are really generally sponsored by and attended by policy and outreach specialists within the division. Um, the only one that I'll say that's a little bit different is um, our VITA sites, and that's our volunteer um, income, tax, income tax preparation sites that we sponsor across the state. And, um, and those, the work that goes on in those VITA sites, quite frankly, is already probably along the, far along the engagement continuum because we're really interacting directly with customers, uh, we're hearing from them, and we're directly interacting, I mean, directly responding to them. So, but but the, the center is really the work that we're currently doing. So the, the next ring then, these are, uh, the inner ring includes interactions with organizations that revenue routinely works with. This, this includes groups like the Minnesota CPAs, the Bar Association, um, the Chambers of Commerce. Um, these groups have defined strategies for connecting with revenue, and as such, their legislative and policy agenda items um, we generally always um, include, and we are generally taking that into consideration. So, so that's, that's what is that center ring. And then finally, with regard to the outer ring, the outer ring includes interactions with communities that are both served and not served by the organizations within the inner ring. Now, our objective with this is to, to use, use um, um, our relationships really with those inner ring organizations, leveraging that so that we can touch the communities on the outer ring, as you can see, quite frankly. And when I say communities, I, I, you know, not just ethnic communities, but like you can see, we've got farmers, we've got seniors, we've got veterans, you know. So this is really about reaching beyond the traditional groups that have, that always are in our ear, that are always coming to us with, with their thoughts, their concerns, and really that's helping, that's for, traditionally has really helped revenue build our, um, our legislative and policy agenda. It is very important that we are hearing from other groups, other communities, other than some of the traditional ones. So this, real, this model really is our way of really getting at that. Next slide. So there's two main groups of work, bodies of work that are going on right now um, within our agency. So first is we have a group of employees that is working to build kind of a stakeholder engagement process. And, um, and they've been putting together, uh, we're looking to put together kind of a, um, a real consistent process for how do we actually reach those communities on the outer ring of that model. 
you know, and maybe that's really through um, non various nonprofit organizations or whatever, but we, we're looking for a consistent and replicatable way so that we can touch those um, communities on that outer ring of the model that we talked about. So that's, that's one body of work that's going on. Another body of work really relates to our equity review process. And, and this really focuses on, on how we take an equity lens to the work that we're currently already doing within the department and building that into just a part of, of what we currently do. So the two main projects that are really going on right now with that is, one, we're taking a look at refundable credits. So that would be like the working family credit or the K-12 education credit. We're looking at those and again, applying an equity lens to that so that we can better understand. So first, why is it that there's a number of Minnesotans across the state who um, could qualify for these credits? Why aren't they applying? Is it something that is it something in the way we're administering those credits? Is it is it something there are barriers there that we aren't understanding? And again, we'll better understand that through uh, through that engagement process. And then the second part of this, the second big project is really looking at at our cultural kind of soft skills and our language skills. So quite frankly, this is about our customer service. You know, how do customers feel when they are contacting the Department of Revenue? Do they feel like they've been heard? Do they feel like we understand what they're saying? You know, that's a, that's a big part of this. Um, and language, I mean, you know, um, you know, we want to make sure that, you know, we, we always, at, at, the, at the department, we talk a lot about plain language. So making sure that what we communicate, um, either in writing or um, our forms or whatever, that we use plain language so that average Minnesotans can truly understand what we're saying. The other piece of this is about, is about having in proper interpreters. There are a number of uh, Minnesotans across the state who English is not their first language, and trying to, trying to make sure that we have interpreters where necessary, that we have interpreters across the board, it's more than having Spanish-speaking interpreters. I mean, you know, being able to have interpreters who speak um, several languages, potentially, um, you know, we have a, we've had several situations where, where we've had miscommunications with employees, I mean, with customers who just, quite frankly, haven't understood what is being asked of them or what we're saying. So this is the, those are two of our big projects relative to our equity work. Next slide. And then with that, um, I ran through that as quickly as I could, but I, what I, with that I just say thank you for, for taking the time to, to hear me um, as I spoke about the, the, how our the work of our department and, um, and really looking at a, a slice of what we do, um, particularly related to um, outreach and engagement. So with that, if there's time, I'd like to open it up for any questions that anyone may have. And I'd love to be able to try to answer those. Yeah, absolutely. We have time for questions. So council members, um, are there any questions that you have for Commissioner Doty? Madam Chair, am I able to ask a question if there's none from the council? Yeah, because I do. This is uh, Council Crawford, and my yeah, question. I'm not hearing. Did we just lose you, Carl? Okay. Yep. Now we can go yeah. ahead and ask your question. Um. So, so as we come out of the pandemic, what gives you the most? to be economically here in Minnesota? Hmm, wow. <laughs> that's, a, that's a great question. <laughs> um, so let me, so my concern, I'll start there. <laughs> I'll start with my concern. My concern, quite frankly, is that, um, you know, the pandemic has hit um, um, our communities um, harder than almost anyone. And, um, and so everything that's bad and been challenging with the with the um, with regards to the pandemic has been exacerbated um, by our uh, exacerbated within our communities. So so um, understanding what those lasting impacts are um, is really is really going to be 
a challenge. I mean, I think about the impact on our children and, and the, this distance learning and how that has, in some cases, been successful, but in a lot of cases, you know, maybe not as successful, you know, making sure that our kids have not fallen even further behind on average than, than what they were pre-pandemic, you know. So, um, you know, we're the ones losing jobs um, at a higher rate. I mean, so there's a lot impacting um, our community. So um, my hope, though, is that um, one of the things that this is this whole issue of what do we do to help um, communities um, post pandemic and um, you know is going to be front and center at the legislature at the legislature um, with the session starting in January. I mean, I think there's a number of potential um, relief bills and things that are being um, put forward that hopefully will um, impact um, these communities. Um, I will tell you that that this is a big issue that the governor is um, very, very concerned with. You know, one of the things that if anyone listened to uh, um, uh, Commissioner Showalter um, from MMB recently when he, um, you know, presented the, um, you know, the November forecast, and it was a much brighter forecast than I think most of us thought, you know, which is a great thing, but he highlighted the fact that so many of communities of color um, um, are still falling way below, you know, um, the levels that he's looking at. So, so a lot of the, I think a lot of the legislation and the, the programs and policies that are going to be put forward um, in the leg this legislative session, I think will have a, a target in some respects to uh, low income communities and communities of color. No, yep, that's good. Thank you. Any other um, questions from the council? Because I do have one. And and mine, I'm not I'm not seeing anybody. But mine, um, Robert, really is around. When you think about the council and you think about our role, you know, really kind of to be an advisor to the governor and some of the issues mm -hmm. that really stem around African um, heritage communities. How do you see us best aligning, you know, some of that outreach efforts between our agency and your agency? Now, I, um, uh, Narita, I think that's a great question, quite frankly. And, and I look at it as this is an opportunity for us to really partner, quite frankly. Um, you know, as you, as you heard me say, you know, we're looking to reach out um, and hear from um, communities across the state. Um, wanting to hear from um, communities of African descent is absolutely important. And, um, and they would be one of those communities on the, on the outer ring of our model, quite frankly. And so um, using uh, our leverage, if you will, with organizations like the council um, would be a way for us to, um, to partner. And so that's understanding what some of the issues are understanding, you know, like I'd love to be able to, to utilize the, the council for discussions about, you know, potential policy choices and being able to, you know, to get some sense of, does that sound like that would um, have a positive impact on our community or no, Robert, that's a stupid idea. Never do that. Right. I mean, th those are the kinds of things that, that I think that how we can partner together and, um, and, and also, you know, I also like to be available um, as, as the council has questions. I mean, you know, I mean, again, we're revenue. So, you know, that this is where the money's at. <laughs> and, um, and this is where the money is flowing through, quite frankly. And, um, and again, we're making policy choices that will impact various communities across the state, um, either positively and or negatively. And um, so as we present like, a tax increase, for instance, on something, you know, that just an example. I mean, I'd like to hear from the council members on, you know, what they, how they feel about that. Um, again, like I said, what do they think the impact is? So I really, Narita, think that we can find a lot of different ways to share information and to really partner. Good. No, looking forward to that. I think that definitely, you know, engages you know it engages community engages you all engages us but it also you know is a benefit you know as much resources that we can provide and as much information that we can provide 
um, to our constituents. And I think that that also helps, especially when we're hearing directly from community, what impact, like you said, using the tax Absolutely. increase as an example, um, then we can say, hey, whoa, this is going to impact, you know, thousands of people yeah. or it may not, you know, have a huge impact on this constituency or whatever the case may be. So, so good information to know from there. Um, yep. Any yep. other questions from the council? I know um, Linda has a question. Are any other council members have um, a question for Commissioner Doty? Amber, has there, is there anything on, because um, I know we're streaming this Facebook Live, so I don't know if anybody has chimed in from there. But while you're looking at that, Linda, you can go ahead. Nice. Nothing? Okay. Actually, my question was in regards to outreach as well. And then also, I just wanted to compliment you on that uh, engagement model. Uh, it, it was quite impressive, and I'd love to talk to you at a later date as to how that's structured and who is actually managing those pieces. I always love to do that, Linda. <laughs> Thank you, Commissioner. <laughs> You're welcome, Mr. Executive Director. <laughs> <laughs> any any other questions before um, before we move on with the agenda? Um, I just want to say thank you, um, Commissioner Dory, for coming and spending time with us, and um, you know, going through your model, going through what you know, Department of Revenue is doing. Um, I know I learned some things because you know, we think of revenue, we think instantly Uncle Sam. <laughs> <laughs> and, so, and so it's nice to see, you know, the engagement aspect and engagement model. Like I, I echo what Linda had to say, um, very detailed model, but I also see where there can be some um, leveraging and alignment between our agencies um, as well. So thank you for coming and taking time um, and explaining some things for us. Um, well, again, thank you. Thank you all very much. I appreciate you um, having me. And um, and good luck to you all. And everyone, please stay safe. Truly. All right. Thank thank you. You guys have a good one. Yeah. Take care. You too. So um, so moving moving on with the agenda. Um, the other piece that I wanted to mention under unfinished business is the commissioner placement update. So if you recall. Um, prior to Linda, we had had conversations with Justin of, you know, should we place a commissioner on, and this actually is in statute where it can happen, they would serve a year. We had talked about engaging um, Commissioner Grove. Uh, we had also engaged, uh, you know, basically three individuals from the from Department of Employment and Economic Development. So it's Commissioner Grove, it was Deputy Commissioner Warfa, and then also Director um, Marine Ramirez. And so what we've decided, because I do do the one on ones with Linda, and because there's so many different new things that are happening, um, you know, new staff coming on board, staff that has left, uh, we felt that we would want to table that discussion and wait until Linda gets a little bit more acclimated and then maybe revisit that, you know, sometime, you know, in the, in the future. Uh, so I just want to give you all a heads up, you know, on that. Um, we did not, I see the chat. Uh, we did not decide who's coming. We didn't finalize who's coming for January and February for commissioners. Um, what we did throw out there is we did throw out a couple of um, items. One, we threw out um, MMB. And then the other um, that we talked about is potentially having Commissioner Malcolm come back and give an update on the pandemic. Any questions on the two items that I mentioned? with either the commissioner schedule 2021 or even just the update of the placement that we're going to table that and, and kind of re-engage when it makes sense. All right, hearing none, I'm going to move on. Um, so under new business, um, committees for council members. So um, hats off to a couple of you all that actually, you know, have already been engaged with a couple of activities with the council. So we had asked for two members to help with the bylaws. We also asked for two members to help with the annual report. And then we're also seeking um, volunteerism for the day on the hill. 
um, i.e. the virtual day on the hill <laughs> is what will end up happening. And so just wanted to just, you know, bring that up. And what we're trying to do is right now, because the council is in trans transition for staffing, is we felt it, you know, this is where we can now, you know, give our input. This is where we can be a little bit more engaged as council members and not just come um, month to month and kind of yay and nay items, but really kind of engage with what's going on in the day-to-day -day activity, but then also help do some heavy lifting um, while they are in transition and while they are short staffed. And so I know we had mentioned it um, before, but again, if you have an interest in helping try to map out what the day on the hill is gonna look like, because we're looking at it from a virtual modality, please shoot Linda an email and let her know we don't want any more than three of us to be on a committee because then what happens if we have more than that then we end up having a quorum and then it's considered an open meeting um so i do want to um, want to bring that up um and you know what carl i don't i think you signed up for and wayne remind me um was it you and carl for the bylaws or there was something else well, I don't, uh, if Carl, Carl did, I don't know. Uh, we, were, we were contemplating that if no council member volunteered, then, then the executive will be able to do that. Um, so if there's any volunteer, we still want at least one person to volunteer. Okay. The council. Yeah. Um, and then, no, Carl, it looks like Linda just um, sent you a note. It was not, um, it yeah, wasn't okay. necessary. Yeah. Right. So it wasn't for that one. Okay. Um, any other questions in reference to um, the committee? Um, this is beef to, sorry to interrupt, uh, Madam Chair. I That's just okay. wanted to um, let you know that I had a question in the chat. It's not really that doesn't really have to do with what you were speaking about, but I just wanted to. No, it's from a it's from a community member, and I did ask for public comments. Um, it is Dr. Lawson, um, and that you know, no, as of right question. now. Oh, um, I think she also. I think she actually asked the same question as me. Okay, cool. Yeah. So, um, and so I will I will bring that up, even though we kind of bypass public comments. But um, one of the questions that is in the chat as we're talking about forward planning and really engagement is around, um, and I'll just read your question, is there talk about inviting African organizations to come and present their work? Once you um, exhaust the commissioners, it will help to hear from the groups that, that um, you represent. Um, and I can kind of speak to that, Dr. Lawson, right now, um, you know, the commissioners that we're having to come and it may not necessarily, we may not invite all 26 commissioners because there's 26 um, agencies, so they all may not necessarily be invited, but there is, um, we are in the midst of, you know, talking about the outreach plan, how it relates to our strategic planning, so that there has not necessarily been current dialogue about that, but it's not off the table. So hopefully that answers your question. Any other um, questions or concerns about the committees and just how we want to be able to be used a little bit more um, as we're in the midst of transition? And will this all, okay, good. I'm glad, thank you, Dr. Lawson. Um, and so also just wanting to make sure these are temporary, <laughs> you know, so I want to throw that out there. It's not like, hey, I have to sign up for this and I'm going to be on this forever. Um, no, it's usually a temporary time frame that you're, you know, serving. And I think this also helps, um, you know, I think about Carl and I think about even Deborah that, you know, are not necessarily in the metro. And so being able to even utilize some of these committees and some of these outreach efforts um, that we can kind of help and do that from greater Minnesota to, you know, the Twin Cities. And so it's not just, you know, falling on staff, but it's also a way for us to get engaged and also to have our pulse of what's going on in the community. And I will kind of echo something back to um, what one of the community members, now community members, I'll say, um, she used to be a part of the council, but you know, being able to not just look at African-American, but African immigrant um, population as well. So looking at the African heritage as a whole. 
you know, so that's really, you know, I just want to reiterate that is our role um, as council council members is to really bring back have the pulse of what's going on within our own specific community and bringing those issues up and forward um you know for forward movement and action if it calls for action any other um items you guys are pretty quiet tonight well madam chair um, yeah. yes oh okay so so regarding the committees i think is important asking now for volunteers for the day on the hill because uh -huh. time is coming up short here and i think it's important to to kind of have a, a group convene as soon as possible to start talking about the about the uh planning and dynamics of how it's going to go and so i would say um we are asking for volunteers and that's send send linda an email okay so if you have an interest send her an email And then I saw somebody else was going to have asked something. Um, Alfreda, had you were you going to say something? Yes, I was. Um, I just I just didn't know when to chip in with this, but um, just regarding what you said about um, council members kind of bringing back what they're hearing from their communities back to the council, because uh, we know our staff um, council staff cannot be everywhere at the same right. time. I just wanted to echo what was discussed at the last executive meeting, and that is intentionally having a space for like updates from different communities by council members on the agenda. I think that helps because like a lot of us wear different hats and we play different roles within the communities that we are coming from. So I think that would help us to kind of have an idea on the needs and wants of our community in every part of Minnesota, well, at least where we are at. That's something that is manageable. And I think it is. I think what we would have to look at is as we're looking at, you know, and this could be something discussed, you know, as we start to build out, you know, the full agenda, then does that open up for us to have it, um, you know, as a discussion point or is that around the announcements times? And I think it really depends on what it is. And so if we're talking more around issues, which now what we'll start to see. So next month we'll start to get into legislative you know, items. And I think that's a perfect opportunity too to have an actual agenda item that, you know, community outreach or um, community update. Um, and that's where council members, you know, can bring what they're hearing, because like you said, we all wear various hats. Um, this is not the only hat that we wear. But what I, what, what I would want to do is I think we would need to have a heads up because what we don't want is we don't want an exhaustive list but you know, making sure that what's being brought is in alignment with what we're doing as the council and then how we're moving the needle forward, if that makes sense. Yeah, I guess I was thinking about something that can happen um, basically every meeting. So finding a way to have like council updates, but maybe not everyone is gonna do an update or every community, uh, cause maybe, yeah, we, the council is working on something, but like the community have different priorities. Um, and through those updates, we can figure out like, okay, you know, we thought this was this, but actually this is the immediate uh, concern of the community. Um, just something, you know, like just to hear from other people who are working within the community, like what's going on, just so we're not the last people to hear about it. Yeah, no, I would love to, um, you know, and I think that let's let's make a note of that for um, for when we meet for in January, when the executive team meets in January to really, you know, look at this and say, how can we um, how can we make sure that when we bring that up um, so that, like you said, it's not just a laundry list that people are, are bringing to the table. But, you know, th thinking of a seamless way to kind of go around, because now that we're fully seated, you're talking about 11 different people that could have, you know, updates. But I think that is definitely something that it would be something new. And I like the idea because it also allows for us to um, to hear what's going on. Again, I'll pick on Carl. You're in Duluth. So what's going on in Duluth? You know, Deborah is in St. Cloud. So what's going on in St. Cloud? Um, you know, and we're, you know, Twin Cities, you know, scattered, so to speak, um, east side, west side, um, south side, north side. So um, the other hats that you wear, I think that's the beauty about serving on this council is those hats should be brought to this table. 
And we should be able to align and leverage areas that would be, you know, for the greater good, if you will. And so even if it's something that you're wearing a different hat and you're thinking the council should be involved, but maybe the council cannot lead on it, then maybe we can, you know, create a platform to, you know, convene something. And so I think those are, are those are some of the you know things that we really need to be thinking about as we move forward. And it it, it does get to the outreach endeavor. So when you think about um, you know our uh, strategic planning, and one of our you know priorities is really how do we align these services? Or how do we um, you know kind of not not necessarily align, but mitigate the tension, I'll say, between African um, immigrant and then African American. So how do we, you know, meld those things together? We know that there are several issues that we share, but there's also several issues that um, that we don't share. So how do we kind of meld those things together and address those um, in a manner that all parties and all constituents would be satisfied? So no, good, good call around that. Any other conversation um, about that? And even if you want to tag on to something that, you know, Alfreda said, please feel free. Um, I just like to tag kind of onto that. This is beef too. Um, I had mentioned, I think I put my comment in the wrong spot. So I guess you all didn't see it, but I had mentioned as I think Dr. Fatima Lawson had said, that um, it'd be nice to have black and like African specific organizations join our calls um, just because I'm just thinking about like the legislative session that it's a budget year and like we want to continue to like build and develop our connections with folks in the community. Um, I think as was mentioned, like we don't know everything like we're only we're we're a small group of people and so we we don't have reach in, in every part of the community knowing all the little things that are going on. So to be able to have those folks come in and present or just speak with us and to build those connections with the council um, so that we're able to know the issues that are, are kind of going on and affecting them, but also so they know like what the council does and how we can support them better, I think is going to be really helpful moving forward. Um, and I'm just thinking about the legislative session that's coming up, but I mean, just in general, you know, for the work that we do in the future, just wanted to uplift that, I guess, again. Well, and what I would say to that is, um, you know, this is where, again, you all that are of African heritage invite folks to come. I mean, this is a public meeting, you know, and so if you know that there are people that you want to have specifically present, that's where we need to be the ones to say, hey, come, here's when the council meets, second Tuesday of the month from six to eight, and then what will happen is there, you know, we would want to get a heads up. What are they presenting on? So anytime that we've had presenters come, uh, we kind of have a heads up. We know what they're presenting on. We know the length of time that they're presenting, and then we can bring it to the council. So if there are specific organizations that you feel we absolutely need to hear from them because they have um, a bill at hand or um, there's any other type of legislative activity or even policy activity, and they either want our support or they want to engage us a little bit further, absolutely have them, you know, come to the council, um, you know, but there also needs to be, you know, kind of, like I said, that heads up. So whether they are actually connecting, you know, they they would want to connect with right now in the meantime, it would be Amber. Once we get our legislative and policy director on board, then that's who they would connect with um, and to be able to bring different items forward. And that, I mean, we have public comment. Every meeting there's a public comment. So that's really what that's for, for people to either sign up or to say, hey, I have a question or I wanna present something. We do give them a timeline, um, you know, because we typically have a tight, you know, schedule but we do give them a timeline of saying, if you're going to present, you have one to two minutes, you know, to present your items. If it's if it's going to be something more where um, it's a presentation, then we would want to carve out time to make sure that we have time to hear what they have to say, very specific and similar to what we're doing with the commissioners. And I don't know if you all knew that, so that's why I'm kind of reiterating that 
if there are specific folks that you that have come to you all individually and said, I really think the council should do A, B, and C, let Linda or I know. So that as we're planning, the executive team always meets a week prior to, to our full council meeting, then we can make sure that as we're crafting our agenda, we're crafting it in a manner so that it's not, um, that there's no room for discussion. We're crafting it so that we can have room for discussion. So is that helpful? Um, yes, it is. Okay. <laughs> yep, you're welcome. <laughs> Any other discussion? I mean, good, good discussion. I appreciate this because we have a lot of new council members. So a lot of folks don't necessarily know um, that that is absolutely open to be able to do stuff like that. So I'm going to move on um, if I'm not hearing anything else. We have about uh, 25 minutes or 23 minutes, really. And then we have Nika Creative that's going to come and present our annual report at 730. But I want to go through our standing items. Um, so as you know, with the oral history project, we kind of put that on hold. We have the, um, the grant dollars that came in. We're waiting because um, Shakira was primarily the contact for that. And there's no there's a rush to get it done. Um, you know, so once she comes back from maternity leave, then we'll move forward with that project. Um, our strategic, any questions before I move on? Okay, um, our strategic plan, uh, Linda and I met with um, Karen DeYoung and Associates. And um, one of the things that we're looking at doing is um, we wanna do a visioning session. We had talked about doing it in January. We agree that we really should push it back to um, February. Uh, just because January is already, you know, timeline driven with the annual report. Um, at that point, we're hoping, fingers crossed, we'll have a policy director on board, um, you know, and <laughs> let me say we will. <laughs> we will have a policy and legislative director on board. And so we just, you know, we're going to have a conversation with them again um, to push it back into February for us to be able to have a visioning session. So as we're moving closer and closer, as you all remember, uh, we voted for to extend their contract to the end of the fiscal year, which is June 30th. Um, it's no additional dollars to do that, but what it did is it allowed them to stretch out their timeline for some of their deliverables. And so I just think if we go back to them and say, because January is already so tight with, you know, and, and the session starts, let's move the visioning session back a month, uh, maybe have it in February, and then that also leads us into moving towards implementation. Um, and I know that that was also sent out in the packet. So hopefully you all, you know, receive that as a reminder. Um, for the most part, I want to say everybody probably did see it, but there might be a couple of people that may not recall seeing the entire document. Um, so I did want to just bring that piece up. Um, and we're moving along. So I don't know if we want to connect with Rosemary's team to see if they, if they want to come, you know, so come sooner. Or um, the other thing that we can do is because I, even though we did go ahead and vote on our um, consent agenda items, Linda or Amber, are there any items that you all want to call out that was in the report that um, that we can discuss, um, being that we have additional time? I think you said you didn't have anything. You were on mute, Linda. I apologize, Chair Hughes. I, I don't have anything that really needs to be brought up. Okay. Um, but I am getting ready to, I'm calling uh, Nika Creative right now. They said Perfect. they would be ready to jump online early, so. Okay, no. Um, Amber, are, are there any things that you want to um, uplift um, that was on the report that I think would be good information for us to know? Um, there's nothing major, but for the sake of us filling some time, I can <laughs> I can say some things. <laughs> um, right, that's what we're doing. <laughs> sure. Uh, so in the report, I just shared um, under the legislative side that the House um, DFL leadership did announce their committees and chairs for the next biennium and of people of African heritage, um, Representative Moran will chair Ways and Means, Representative Noor will chair Workforce and Business Development, Finance and Policy, 
and um, let me just put on my video for the live stream. And then <laughs> representative, <laughs> and representative Ruth Richardson will chair education policy. Um, so that's um, our African heritage leadership so far in the house, um, the full leadership, you know, vice chairs and things like that. And also committee membership hasn't been released yet. And we haven't heard anything from the Senate yet. Um, and then as mentioned by Commissioner Doey, the um, budget forecast was released last week and is measurably better. Um, and I know that they're working right now um, to potentially pass will create some legislation this month to do some uh, relief, COVID related relief for small businesses and things of that nature. So we will keep an eye on that um, because potentially there will be a special section session next week for that. Um, but other than that, you know, last month was we hosted the policy summit and uh, we got really great feedback from that. Um, event and so thank you all for supporting it. It was definitely a huge lift and a major shift from last year, um, but people really did appreciate the conversations we had. Um, the report that I shared does have the, the preliminary metrics from the video on our live stream and registration. Um, and we're just, you know, going off of that momentum and and starting to work on preliminary legislative priorities. So that's all. Any questions? Nice. Any questions for um, Amber? And I know um, Rosemary's team, so Nico Creative will be on in about two minutes. Um, and oh, she's on! Hey, Rosemary, <laughs> I didn't even see you pop on. <laughs> um, no volume for you though. Are you on mute? All right, there we go. There we go. <laughs> hello, hello. So before we turn it over to you all, um, any council members have any announcements or anything? Anything coming up that we need to know? And it could be community driven, your organization, whichever. All right. Yeah. Well, can can you hear okay, me? Go ahead, Jude. Go ahead. Uh, okay. So we have um, African um, uh, leadership uh, conference coming up this this uh, Thursday and Friday. I think we shared it last time. Just a reminder for people to register and attend. So uh, that's the announcement. And um, my I've been having issues with my um, connection um, for the legislative um, session that is coming up. Um, I joined a working group that was put together by the mayor of uh, St. Paul, Melvin Carter, and uh, uh, it's mostly uh, um, our people, black people and some other minority groups that um, form, of the, uh, form the working group. So we're coming up with some of the, we have like 15 um, I, uh, items that we are, we are working on to for uh, for proposal to the to the legislature. So by this Friday, we'll be able to vote on the top three, and I think uh, most of them are just things that are that will be very beneficial to our community. So I'll be sharing the information uh, with you. Um, the chair will be sending information or Amber, whoever. Um, as we get information, okay, I think it's good to collaborate with some of the groups, especially things that are going to impact our community. Okay, no, thank you. Uh, th you're welcome. Any other um, announcements? All right, well, for the duration of our meeting time, I'm gonna turn it over to Rosemary with Nika Creative, and this is who has been working on our annual report. So Nika, it's all yours. Hello, good evening. I'm just waiting for Ganetta to join. I think she's logging okay. in. Um, so I'm just gonna give her like 10 seconds. He just texted me saying it's slow. But yeah, but um, thanks for having us here to share the progress. 
Um, and thanks for selecting us to do this work for you. Uh, for my company, it is meaningful work. So yes, I'm Rosemary Boyer, and I um, own and manage the, the strategy for Naker Creative, a brand development firm. Um, so it's definitely with with that passion of building inclusive brands that we are um, been so excited to partner with all of you to actually help bring this year's annual report to life. So um, Garnetta's still trying to get on. <laughs> Can I share my screen? Yes, you should have sharing credentials okay. already. All right, sure. let me try and do that. It should say share at the bottom. Okay. Did I succeed? You did. We're just waiting yes. for it. Yeah. <laughs> I know learning all these different platforms. Okay. So I don't know. I'll just I'll just keep going here. Okay. So the objective for us was to design and produce the 2020 annual report for the Council for Minnesota's of African Heritage, um, extending you know the celebration around that 40th. Um, anniversary. The scope of our work is to create a 16 page report and also a 2 page summary. Um, this was decided partly because I uh, wanted to appeal to different audiences. Obviously, there are some within your audience base that would want to read through all the detail. And then it's a great opportunity to put forward your agenda to a different audience base, uh, mostly the um, broader community and give them enough information where they can seek more. A lot has happened so far. Um, as you all know, this has to be wrapped up by no later than January 15th. So thanks to the team there, it's been um it's been very, very active. So we have um we have conducted a number of, of input meetings. So the meetings first to understand, kind of get in and in, in, ingrained in what it is that you do, what stories you want to tell, and then also more meetings around the actual content of the report. We presented two co concepts to the core team. One concept, um, design concept was selected and um, you all should have the copy draft by now to review. So the selected concept is this one. The strategy for this is to show how CMA is empowering greater equity policy and action. So definitely um, going with the, the, the sign of the times, this year has been unprecedented um, in the fight. Um, anyone who's been fighting knows we've had to fight much harder this year um, through COVID, through the racial unrest. So we felt um, the team picked this particular concept to sort of encapsulate um, the work that you all are doing and also to relate to the community. So this will be the front cover of the annual report. And here's the inside spread. As you can see, that theme of empowerment is carried through. So this is just an example of what the spread could look like, empowering equitable action. So you're going to see through that we will continue to pull that term empowerment Empowering again, so using very strong action oriented imagery. So this is the look and feel. So I've shared with you the cover and inside spread. Um, Ganetta, hey Ganetta, you made it. I made it. <laughs> <laughs> um, Ganetta is going to talk more about the cop, um, content. So, like Rosemary said, um, good evening to you all. Um, my name is Garnetta, and what you'll see here is just a snippet of the content draft. Um, what I felt was important was kind of to show how we use the empowering theme throughout the document. So, what you're seeing is a section header here that says empowering increased ampl amplification, and then under there, you'll see some details and copy as to what we're going into, um, including community research, um, courageous conversations, so on and so forth. So you can review this in detail with the document that you were shared with um, with all the copy. 
Um, but I thought it would be important to kind of show here how we were weaving that theme throughout the whole document. And of course, the layout would include such imagery pulling a, a lot from last year, considering there wasn't a lot of photography that took place this year with COVID restrictions um, and supplementing that possibly with some stock photography like you saw just prior. I think one of the main questions that we wanted to pose to the group and as well, we want to take time for any questions that you might have about what we shared is how do we make this commemorative? How do we make this annual report show that we're on the 40th year? And I know there was um, some conversation with our group about um, thanking people for their service and whatnot, but wondering if there's any brainstorming ideas that somebody felt strongly about that they wanted to share. Okay, and then we can have discussion about that unless someone has something now. And if you all, um, you know, have as they're going through, if you guys have questions, um, council members, you can just type it in the chat as well because I'm kind of looking at the chat so I can ask, um, you know, if you don't unmute quick enough as they're going through stuff. Okay. And then, you know, the next steps. Um, we look forward to receiving your feedback on the content, um, and then we will take that content and make any necessary revisions and put that into layout, and then you'll get to see the end report laid out. We are pushing to get this layout to you by the 14th, um, and the electronic version we are looking to get done by the 9th of January. The print version is TBD. Um, one, we're not gathering in places right now, so rushing to print, and then what quantity do we print? But the electronic version will be ready before the 15th. Um, we're hoping we can stick to this timeline because our agency does close <laughs> for, for from the 23rd to the 2nd. Um, obviously, we won't leave you hanging, but we're trying to do everything we can to get things wrapped up so the team can take a much needed break for the year. All right, with that, I'll stop sharing my screen and we can have discussion. So first and foremost, love the selection of the graphics. <laughs> the picture, um, really strong considering um, what we've endured, you know, this past year. And I think it does that that cover has a very strong statement. So um, a love it, love it, love it. <laughs> if we had to do a grading scale. <laughs> Others um, comments. Sure. sure, I want to make a comment. I, I think is is uh, I'm excited just by looking at it. Um, the way it's presented. Well, one thing I just want to throw out there, maybe just to open our minds to the possibility uh, that came to my mind is more of uh, what is what is the what is the buying power of the African African American or people of African heritage? Uh, the, buy, the the buying power in, in terms of economically here in the state of Minnesota. I know about 10, 15 years ago, Dr. Bruce Curry. I did some research on that and, and presented some data. I don't know whether anything was updated at that point, but I think it would be important or maybe impactful to just see what was strength, economic strength that we have as as a group and how we can be targeted as a as a market group, why is it important and what kind of impact we have if we're not using our buying power on the larger community. So that's something I just want to throw out there. Maybe take a we can take a look at that if it's if it's important to kind of include something like that. Does that make sense? Yep. Okay. And I know Linda just said uh, we could probably add, add that to the landscape of the African heritage community. So mm -hmm. that's the section that we can add that to. Yeah. So Andre, you look like you were about to say something. <laughs> I was just going to jump in and um, just say that I did get a chance to review the full draft earlier today, and I just want to commend um, the team for just the work that you have put into it. I thought it was very well written. Um, I really appreciated the context of, you know, everything that we have 
kind of endured this year um, as a starting place for where, um, you know, we have, how, what we have accomplished this year and to really lay it out in the way that you did. I just thought it was very well written. And even the places where I was like, well, where's the data on this? It was like, if I just read to the next section, the data was there, um, you know, the charts were there and I just really appreciate it. I think that's really important for, especially legislators who, who you know, they try to read through documents quickly. And so having charts and graphs and those kinds of things are very helpful. So I just appreciated that. Um, and I appreciate, you know, the opportunity for Chair Hughes and Executive Director Sloan to, you know, provide some commentary in the beginning as well. But I was wondering if it is protocol or you know, appropriate for there to also be some commentary from the governor since this, this um, council really represents his administration. And so if there was just, you know, some small, um, you know, commentary from him, that would, I think, um, be helpful as well. Well, I appreciate your comments. I think that's really helpful. Um, I'm sure Linda and Narita, we can discuss that recommendation when we meet again. And um, I think it's important to highlight too, that that's not it for the graphs. Um, there's going to be quite a couple more graphs coming um, and revising some of the staffing graphs and things like that, just so that you all will have a template to kind of move forward with as the years come. So, um, but thank you for your feedback. That's great to hear. Yeah, I saw some of the placeholders and that was helpful. So thank you. And there's a, um, there's a question in the chat from um, council member uh, Busa. Um, she's just saying maybe there could be a page on summarizing or highlighting important work and, accompl and accomplishments from past executive directors um, and years as we highlight the 40th year. Also it would be nice to see how things have changed leading up to now. Um, one other question that I'm gonna throw out there too, it's that uh, Carl Crawford, um, Council Member Crawford says, how will we capture the historical event and movement that began in Minnesota after the murder of George Floyd? And, um, and you know, Carl, I, I can pro I'm gonna take a stab at that. Um, it may be difficult, you know, to capture that because we have to remember that this audience specifically is more so for legislators. Um, you know, yes, the audience also is for, um, you know, for community, but ideally that's that's kind of why the annual report is really written. It's our time to highlight um, various things that we've done, but the focus really is from a legislative perspective. Um, so I don't know if that's something different that we do or, or if we look at what's already in there and maybe it's tweaked. Does that help or are you looking for something or is there more specifics that you're looking for? Uh, I can try and speak, I don't know if I'm coming clearly. Yep, you are. Uh, positive, but also that there is a burden and responsibility for legislators to continue the change that we're working for and to highlight the work that you did as we wrote a letter to community um, that we recognize as pain and loss in our community. So how do we grow and more importantly heal as Minnesota? I'll pause there. No, that's good. And I know um, I'm also getting some more um, chats here that says it does, it does reflect um, how we showed up through the movement. So the various steps that we took um, we're having the conversations and working with the human rights um, to get the um, lead person out of Freeman's office into um, A.G. Ellison's office. So that is that is outlined um, in the report as well. But I also hear what you're saying as far as um, you're more so talking about elevating it a little bit higher than how it's highlighted currently. And that can be some discussion that because right now what's happening is we're having weekly calls uh, with NECA Creative. And so I think from there, we we can kind of relook at that 
and and see if there's other areas that you know and it could just be language you know that shows up a little bit stronger or or is it is it too far to show any of the images from that time I yeah, have the good. but if you all have not i was gonna say and then when you're looking at more content and i don't know if you all have had a chance to, to review the annual report but i know um, Linda did send it out. And so read that content and give feedback ASAP. Um, I'm, I'm going to give you, unfortunately, a 24 hour turnaround. <laughs> um, so if you at least by end of day to, tomorrow or the latest 10 a.m. on the, the 10th, um, read through that content because I think you'll see where there's been some aspects that have been elevated. Uh, I'm just trying to see if there's any other. And I want to make sure I'm, I'm capturing um, what you all are mentioning too. So I just want to circle back to Carl. I know one of the questions Rosemary said, if we, if we added some, you know, pictures from that, and then along with the content that's already mentioned, is that kind of um, ideally what you would want to try and see? Yes, yes, Madam Chair. Okay. Um, okay. I think that would be significant. And, and as as we were talking, I just think if it's not in our report, whose report would it be in for legislators to read? Right. You're right. You're right. Thank you. No, thank you for the conversation. Any other um, questions or feedback? So I know um, <laughs> member Busa just says um, she doesn't think we should use photos because it has because we haven't been leading that movement but wanting to uplift it as an important part of the year and our work moving forward. Um, can you talk more about that beef too? Yeah, I just want to make sure that like the folks who have been leading this work and who've been putting in the time and energy for years and years um, leading up to the murder of George Floyd, like those are the people who should like, they they own that that I guess in a way. And so I don't want us to like, be using it or I don't know, it seems kind of like claiming it, even though it's not really ours. So I just I just want there to be kind of a, a distinction in that we're uplifting that work and also working alongside those folks to make sure that we are keeping the movement, that people have been impacted, all that in mind in our work like moving forward. So I think a piece about acknowledging the killing, acknowledging uprising and what that means for us and the work that we're doing is like the way I see it being incorporated into the report, if that makes sense. Nope, it does. And I and, it, and I don't know, and, and I'm not trying to put any of you all on the spot, but I am going to reiterate, if you have not read it, read the report, um, the photos that can be embedded into that particular section will make sense based off of what we said we've done in alignment with and in, um, you know, kind of leveraging. So it's like we worked coincidentally with this organization in order to get things done and to move the needle. And then the legislative piece that happened, you know, with the policing and everything. So I think if there are photos, it will actually still uplift. Okay, and, and it's not going to be. It's not going to be taken as we're putting these in here because we're leading. No, we led alongside with. And so, if you all have not read it, I understand sixteen pages. But if you have not read that content, then um, I would highly recommend read the content. And then, if you feel like that the wording is not strong enough, or if you're looking for something a little bit more bigger and bolder, that's where we're looking for the feedback because we're on a time frame. I mean, you just kind of saw the time frame that we're on. And once, you know, if we don't hear anything, we're gonna presume 
we're, we're good to go. Um, you know, appreciate that we've had Wayne and Andre as a second eye, so to speak. Um, you know, because then that has also helped to say, hey, read through it, loved it. Um, and like Andre said, there were questions that he had, but then as he kept reading, he was like, oh, okay, it's right there. Yeah, part of the feedback that would be very helpful to us too are any nuances you come across. So, um, Biff, to what you shared is really important. So, as we go through it again, right, we're going to take a closer look at tone and make sure that some things are not assumed <laughs> um, or implied that should not be implied. Um, but I think as you provide feedback, um, nuances, I, I'm excited to see a very, your, the, your council is very diverse <laughs> and we all kind of have our ears tuned to different things. So um, using that ear and just your understanding of the communities that you're within, we would really love that feedback uh, as, you, as you read the book and get back to us. And there'll be another chance to see it in layout. So then you'll be able to give us feedback on the kind of imagery that we're using as well. Yeah. Great. Um, to that, this is Council Member Daniels. I have a quick question. I know the council staff has very limited report, but I wanted to know if there's a comps person on staff at the council, or is there like a comps person that we use? That's available for us to use. Because we have one. Of them. You're cutting out, um, or or you're like talking lower. I couldn't really hear what you were saying. Oh, uh, can you hear me now? Uh, yep. Okay. I was wondering if we have a comms person on staff for the council, or do we have one that we can use that's available to us Just for? For communications, is that what you're asking? Uh, yeah, someone. So that's Reggie. E that's Reggie Evans that we contract with. So like okay. when statements and stuff like that go out, um, that's who we. That's who we actually contract with. Okay. And they and he works alongside with you know basically staffing. And I just want to address one of the questions that I um, that was asked is um, the con the the document that you all have been asked to review. Um, no, there's not going to be pictures because you're reviewing it for content, not actual pictures. So it's it's looking at the content that's being written to make sure what the wording is and what we're saying that we're doing is that's that's what we are asking you all to review and then the layout like rosemary said once that's ready then you'll see the entire document but the document you all have it is you know it very wordy <laughs> you know it's just words so it's kind of hard to really look through what is the entire document going to look like which is why you know she kind of did the layout in the powerpoint but what you're reading for is is the content. That's what we're asking you all to review. Because then it'll make sense when we're talking about what we're uplifting, um, accomplishments, and then how the um, the document is going to be used, so to speak. Any other questions or comments again i reiterate 12 10 10 a.m <laughs> and and that would go directly to linda because that would be the other question that i will get is who are we supposed to send our comp our um comments to send them directly to linda because we don't want rosemary and her team to get a million and one emails so just send them directly to Linda and then what she'll do is uh, we want to be able to give her time to compile the comments and if especially if there's similar comments. Um, then, yeah, if we get an overwhelming response of one area and it's multiple people saying the same thing. Yeah, then we'll have to you know look at making those changes. But don't be offended if it's one person 
and it's not necessarily addressed because again, we're we're on a time frame, but we also want to make sure everybody's voice is still heard. And I'll say with the comments, don't feel like you have to write, right? right. We don't expect you to craft any of the messages. Um, I like the PDF comment tool if you have access to that and just share what your your feedback is for a particular area. Um, but don't feel like you have to rewrite anything. Um, we'll we we'll do all that. Well, with that, I, I, I'm gonna take silence and <laughs> everybody knows what their marching orders are. <laughs> um, so Rosemary and Gardetta, thank you all for being able to join our meeting. Um, awesome job so far. So really pleased with the work that you all have been doing so far and working with Linda and the, and the team. Um, and again, I want to point out, you know, hats off to, to Wayne and Andre also to be a part of that small committee to kind of be the second pair of eyes. Thank, so thank you. you <laughs> thank you. Thanks for having <laughs> us. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. So with that, uh, we are towards the end of our agenda. If there's nothing else, um, any other comments or, um, I mean, we kind of talked about announcements for the greater good. Not hearing none, so it is 7.43. If I can have a motion to adjourn. So moved, Daniels. Seconded, Jude. All right, it has been properly moved and seconded. We are officially adjourned. You all have a great one. Happy holidays, because when we meet again, it'll be 2021. <laughs> Happy New Year.